Hope you're having a good day today. Appreciate you joining me once again, studying along with me. We're going to be looking at the account of when the Samaritans reject the Lord today. And our hymn, it's the hymn, No Tears in Heaven. No tears in heaven, no sorrows give on, all will be glory in that land. There'll be no sadness, all will be gladness, when we shall join that happy band. No tears, no tears, no tears up there. Sorrow and pain will all have flown. No tears, no tears, no tears up there. No tears in heaven will be known. Let's look at our passage in Luke 9, verse 51. Now it came to pass, when the time had come for him to be received up, that he steadfastly says face to go to Jerusalem, sent messengers before his face, and as they went, they entered a village of the Samaritans to prepare for him. But they did not receive him because his face was set for the journey to Jerusalem. When his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them just as Elijah did? But he turned and rebuked them, and said, You do not know what manner of spirit you are of, for the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. It's an interesting account. As it begins, they did not receive him because his face was set for the journey to Jerusalem. They needed to understand, and, and I, don't, I, I don't fully, I guess I'd have to say I don't fully understand myself. The question is, all it says is they did not receive him because his face was set for the journey to Jerusalem. Samaritans and the Jerusalem and the Samaritans and the Jews didn't have dealings with each other. But you know, the Lord had already run into some of the Samaritans in John chapter four. And you have the woman saying, Is this the Messiah? And you have a lot of the Samaritans recognizing that he was the Messiah, when a lot of the Jews did not. And so my question is, is it possible that these Samaritans, that, they, that it, it upset them because he was not going to be staying there? He was going towards Jerusalem. See, they didn't understand why he was going to Jerusalem any more than the Lord's own disciples understood why he was going to Jerusalem. He's going to Jerusalem to die. They didn't understand that. But they didn't receive him because his face was set for the journey to Jerusalem. All the disciples see is they're not receiving him. There, there's no understanding why. And I, I would simply say we need to slow down and try to understand the whys of things that happen. Because sometimes the whys may, may help us to have a little more compassion, a little more sympathy. And just, just for example... The Samaritans, the reason they had no dealings with Jews is because after captivity and the Samaritans had been populated, you had, you had people who had come from other places and been made to dwell there by one of the foreign kings. And so then they would intermarry and, and that's where the Samaritans came from. But anyway, the Samaritans, they actually offered at one point to help build the temple. But because they were Samaritans, um, the answer was no. Well, they go back and they build their own temple. And that's why they worshipped on that Mount Gerizim. And ever since that point, um, there had been animosity between Jews and Samaritans because of that, because of their heritage and because of those things that had happened. Uh, that temple on Mount Gerizim had been destroyed a long time before this. But the animosity remained, and the Jews had no dealings with them, and they had no dealings with the Jews, and there was a lot of prejudice going around. All that's to say, there's a lot of baggage there. There's a lot of baggage there, but like I said, Jesus is already starting to lift some of that baggage. And they don't receive him because he's, he's not staying there. He's going to Jerusalem. It doesn't say... It does not say they did not receive him just blankly. They did not, it says they did not receive him because his face was set for the journey to Jerusalem. Anyway, the disciples, they're just upset. 
and perhaps they need to slow down and understand why. So what the Lord does is he turns around and he rebukes them. Okay, so they they say, Lord, do you want us to command fire? And he turns around and he rebukes them. You know, it doesn't happen every time, but you know, sometimes we think someone should be rebuked. And then the Lord rebukes us. <laughs> we're, we're the ones who need rebuked. You know, it's like those who brought the children and the disciples begin to rebuke them, and then the Lord rebukes the disciples. Uh, the man who's casting out demons in the name of the Lord and the disciples rebuked him, and then the Lord rebukes the disciples. And that's how it is a lot of times, isn't it? That we throw accusations around, and sometimes they're just not justified, and the Lord ends up rebuking us. We need to slow down and remember what kind of spirit we're supposed to have. That's what the Lord says. He turns and rebukes them. You do not know what manner of spirit you have, for the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. That's why the Lord came. I wanted us to think about, because they refer to Elijah. But, you know, the, the Elijah account, they're only focusing on one part of it. And so it's found in 2 Kings chapter 1. In 2 Kings chapter 1, Moab rebels against Israel after the death of Ahab. Ahab's, right, he's king of Israel, but his, he set up shop in Samaria. So Ah Ahaziah falls through the lattice in the upper room in Samaria. So after Ahab, King Ahaziah, however you pronounce that, falls through the lattice, and he says, Go inquire of Beelzebub, the god of Ekron, whether I shall recover from this injury. And the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite, Arise, go up to meet the messengers of the king of Samaria, and say to them, Is it because there is no god in Israel that you are going to inquire Beelzebub, the god of Ekron? Now therefore, thus says the Lord, You shall not come down from the bed to which you have gone up, but you shall surely die. So Elijah departs, and when the messengers come back to the king, the king says to them, Why have you come back? And they say, Well, this guy told us, Go, return to the king, on and on. And the, man, and the king says, What kind of man was it who came up to meet you? Verse 7, and they said, it's a, It was a hairy man wearing a leather belt around his waist. And he said, Oh, it's Elijah. And so the king sent a captain of 50 with his 50 men. So he went up to him, and there he was sitting at the top of a hill, and he spoke to him. And this is where James and John are pulling the account from. And so he spoke to him, Man of God, the king has said, Come down. Elijah said, The said to the captain of fifty, If I am a man of God, then let fire come down from heaven and consume you and your fifty men. And fire came down from heaven. Verse 11, Then he sent to, an, to him another captain of fifty with his fifty men. Man of God, thus has the king said, Come down quickly. And Elijah said, If I am a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume you and your fifty men. A repeat performance. But what James and John don't Remember, they're not focusing on is how that account ends. Because it happens a third time. He sent a third captain of 50, and the third captain of 50 comes up, falls on his knees before Elijah, and pleaded with him and said, Man of God, please let my life and the life of these 50 servants of yours be precious in your sight. Look, fire has come down from heaven and burned up the first two captains of 50s with their 50s. But let my life now be precious in your sight. And the angel of the Lord said to Elijah, Go down with him. Do not be afraid of him. So he arose and went down with him to the king. James and John don't remember that part, do they? Or they're not focusing on that part. They're focusing on the destruction part. And you know, it's easier to destroy, isn't it? It's easier to destroy. It's easier to just go scorched earth. It's much harder to build. But the Lord is laying the groundwork to build, to build a kingdom, to build a kingdom not just for Jews, but for Jews and Samaritans and Gentiles. And so they're not receiving him right now. For whatever reason, they're not receiving him. Jesus says, you need to remember why I came. I didn't come to condemn, I came to save. And so let's be merciful. Let's be merciful. Perhaps the time will come where they themselves would call upon the name of the Lord. I believe Philip goes to Samaria, if I'm remembering correctly. Let, let me look that up real quick, just to make sure I'm not...
telling you wrongly, but doesn't that account in the book of Acts? Let's look. That's in Acts chapter 8. It says, Those who were scattered after the stoning of Stephen went everywhere preaching the word, and then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them. And the multitudes with one accord heeded the things spoken by Philip. Wonder how many of them would not have had the chance if James and John would have had their way. Appreciate you. Hope you have a good day. Join us tomorrow for another portion of our daily praise.